Chet Holmgren is definitely one of the most unique prospects we've seen and given his physical attributes, it's led to a lot of polarizing conversations. At over 7 feet but still under 200 pounds, Chet continued to affect the game in multiple ways, especially defensively during his freshman season at Gonzaga. Starting with defense, Chet is one of the better rim protectors of the last several years. At 7 foot with a 7'6 wingspan, he's got the tools and most importantly, has some of the best timing and natural feel for being in the right spots, ultimately affecting shots at the bucket. He averaged a great 3.7 blocks a game, which ranked 4th in the country. Whether it was the help side or racing what looked like an open layup, or in the post, staying vertical and using every bit of that length, he was not exactly the guy you want to try, even though they often did. Tape, watch this. He plays him like a strong side and then releases him. Kuzi finds Toss wide open and then Holmgren. Middle of the floor, you have to converge and watch it. Same time, we saw this last night. He's anticipating to go up. With that right. And in the pick and roll, he's one of the best and provides some of the most versatility in terms of coverages that you can't find in this draft. And it's been some of the best parts of him as a player. You're trying to funnel guys downhill towards the bucket. Chet has the length, mobility, and shot blocking ability to make that a terrific option. And that's where he really shines first and foremost. If it's hard hedging and recovering, he's done that well and against some great competition. And everything in between, including some switching that we'll get into, he was effective. I think you're fair. You, you're, you, you take a shot before 10 seconds on the shot clock here. Took the contact, he was still able to finish over top of it. Inside, nice fine shot clock. You know a lot about skills. He's a multi skilled player. Johnson rolling inside. Never, he's rarely in a yeah. rush. Gets cone on his hip and just takes his time and gets an easy. Now along with the pick and roll, with bigs in the modern NBA, we always talk about their ability to defend out on the perimeter, and I think that's something that he can do. Now he's not Bam out of bio or Evan Mobley, but there were many times that he held his own out there and against some really good players. I don't know if I'd take the switch everything approach with him for extended periods or late in games, but he's capable and not solely anchored to the paint like many rim protectors are, and it's part of the reason I think him being a four is possible. I mean, that's just... Amazing on the road. Zagan now shooting it better tonight from the three point line. Guys are staying home on three point shooters. That's allowing roll opportunities like on the Jeff Holmgren starting off on Paolo Bancaro. And Gibson. Their best option offensively, nearly 15 points a game. Holmgren there with the help. Gibson blocks it. When it comes to finishing, Chet was statistically the best in the country. Of course, being 7 feet tall is an advantage, but it's really his tremendous soft touch and ability to play through contact and stay effective at weird angles that pushes him to that next level. He shot a ridiculous 80% around the basket in the half court, not including post-ups, which of course ranked number one. Free throw line, home run, offensive rebound, and he'll... Biggest lead. Timmy tiptoes into the paint. Hook shot, not gonna go. Holmgren with the putback. Drew Timmy drives to the bucket, missed the layup. Holmgren offensive rebound. He did this in a few major ways, which happened to be a lot of the areas he was most used offensively. He's got terrific agility and footwork as a role man, and I really wish they would have used him more here, especially on empty side pick and rolls and incorporating it into the dribble handoffs and some pistol action. I think that could be a great way to use him going forward, especially considering what he can do as a shooter and ball handler. Now he lacks a bit as a screener, of course, but over time, I think he can be passable and really maximize some of that overall potential. That's just an unforced mistake. Andrew Nimhart, great give and go, Holmgren left. While in the dunker spot, he, Timmy, and Nimhard really had a lot working. He served as a lob threat here with Timmy making that decision on the short roll or on high lows, and then from dump offs and drawing lobs from his guards. He's not the most explosive, but he gets up pretty quickly, and the length and soft hands really help here. Easy chances. Now Timmy finds Nimhard. Oh, 
were homers by himself. Not anymore. Trey continued to improve as a three-point shooter throughout the year. He shot 39% on the season on over three attempts a game, 50% on four attempts in conference play, and I think this can be a real strength of his going forward. He was excellent in transition both as the trailer and occasionally bringing the ball up and pulling up before the defense is set or just taking advantage of bigs being taught or schemed to run to the paint. Holmgren the rebound. He's got four in the ball game to go with nine points. Timmy's 11. He's more comfortable at the four, but they can move him to the outside and go tall. They get home Second straight possession, Chet Holmgren over time check got a lot more opportunities in the half court on spot ups he was even involved in some pick and pops some dribble handoffs and other shots off design screens of the ukraine uh, the airport in that area was completely destroyed his dad is as a police Look at this. Holmgren, three, got it. San Francisco, very much analytically driven. They love the three-point shot. Chad Holmgren. And it took Randy Bennett one minute to get him in the game off the bench in the second half. Holmgren, three, there's an answer. Some of the biggest appeal for Chet comes from his ability to handle the ball and do a little extra than we're used to seeing from guys at his size and position. Take it off the glass and lead the break, which is always a great asset to have on your team. And there were plenty of moments throughout the season where he made something happen in transition that even the most skeptical had to be impressed by. That's right. in the foul. Thank, thank goodness I'm sturdy. <laughs> and Chet Holmgren. With the round, the two we will jump a little more into his creation in the half court, but this is an obvious area full of upside. From the spins and extended finishes to some of the dark fades and plenty more, there's some real stuff here. Holmgren as many ball screens as they can. Holmgren fading away That's over You think he's kidding how to turn around here. Talk Nembhard, 11 assists the other day. Holmgren thought about a three, dribbles in on Duran, turn around is You can't leave Holmgren alone out there, he'll hit the crease. 60% in conference beyond the arc. Are you kidding? Holmgren and Williams. Fade away. Yes. Holmgren's such a great passer and a three-point threat, and he's so skilled. Are you kidding me? Holmgren in, Timmy out, Chad Holmgren spins and scores. Prospect for the next level, and why he's been such a great player for the next level. Nice. Wow, to find his rhythm and flow, but he could have a big game tonight, and quite frankly, San Francisco needs him to have one. Nemhart's, or uh, rather, Nemhart Fountain. Now to some improvement areas and leading off with the one that everybody focuses on with him and that is his frame, his strength, his weight. There are a few areas that I think his physical deficiencies pop up most and will likely heading into the NBA. But starting on the defensive end, when guys hit him at an angle with spins, little sneaky hooks and other moves after getting a step, there was less room for error on his part and there were times it knocked him off balance and took away some of his leverage. Although it was pretty obvious the disadvantage he was at a lot of times, he still really battled and made it extremely difficult even for guys who had 30 to 50 pounds on him. Those quick attacks ended up being a lot tougher than the long back downs in the post just because of his feel and ability to block shots. The idea that his entire game can be boiled down to being too skinny doesn't make a ton of sense considering no one's a finished product this early and he's not going to be asked to guard the league's most dominant post threats for the entirety of his minutes. They're not the exact same but Evan Mobley and the Cavs have been strategic with the matchups to maximize his abilities and minimize his time guarding guys like Embiid. Just watch Cavs Sixers from March 16th with no Jared Allen and I think you might be surprised by what you see. While the effort is great there, there are times where he's just simply outmatched on the glass. I'm still a bit unsure about how much this will really affect him long term, his rebound rate is very high and that willingness to bang goes a long way, but I found this to be the area that could potentially cause some of the most problems for him. I generally think the idea that his entire game or NBA projection can be boiled down to being too skinny doesn't make a ton of sense, especially considering no one's a finished product at that age and a team is not going to ask him to match up one-on-one -on -one with the league's most dominant centers for the entirety of his minutes. 
They are not the exact same, but we've watched Evan Mobley and the Cavs be strategic with the matchups in order to maximize his abilities as a rover and help defender and also minimize the times that he has to bang inside against the likes of MB. <laughs> I'm shocked that he didn't just invite us on. Holgren! Yeah, I would agree. I've, I've spent a few, uh, a few long weekends in Mobile's <laughs> Has to come out. Davis. He takes it to the hole. And beautiful. Carlson. Holmgren. Right, he just took that charge to the chest and got up like a champ. Well, I, yeah, he may be frail, but he is tough. Holmgren had Bolton wide open. Final seconds. Nemhard, this is a deep three. Holmgren tipping it to himself. What a rebound. The three great jerseys. You're not. Them when they're this 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 on fire. Jamari Bouye, nice dish. Masalski. Low back. Wow. Connects. One thing that I've questioned is his ability to consistently create offense for himself in the half court and the assertiveness to do so. He's definitely had his moments, but it's not fully realized in overall offensively. There were a lot of times that he kind of floated. That's partially on Gonzaga, but I wanted just a little more out of him as a self creator and someone you can depend on to go get you a bucket in whatever way. Holmgren faked the three. And Timmy was giving him some space to take away the drive. Holmgren with a try. You can break down the defense, you're going to have opportunities. Denying the down. Johnson had it stripped away. Now we get to see the seven footer bring it up. All grin to Timmy. Timmy! And that Zach defense was spectacular on that position. Great catch by Salas. Can he finish? The baseline never arrived. Holmgren again, back in the game. Look at this pass. That time by Tommy Cousy. Holmgren back door to Bolton. Where he stores all that footage. Holmgren bounce pass. Watson. Lay because if you don't have to go against the set defense, that's when you're going to find a lot more success. I see Chet at his best being an all-star, possibly even being a bit better than that and one of the more unique unicorn presences in the league. The floor is an interesting question. I think there are some concerns that can really alter the level that he gets to, but it's also hard for me to see him ending up as much less than an important contributor, just given the history both statistically and with his general talent. He's somebody who comparisons really don't give a ton of value to. He's truly his own player. Westbrook has 13. Mobley. Come on, Young. Great help. Gaz Rose, Young. Chet Holmgren is one of the most unique prospects we're going to see. Of course, there are obvious strengths and disadvantages to his game, but he really is good at a lot of things. Time will tell who Chet becomes at his best, but the attributes he has make him an intriguing selection for many teams at the top of the draft. First, so I'll forever be the second. Who rep Lamar Park is something you ain't got a question. They like, now I'm grown up. Better than we expect. You can see the ball show.